Having been a designer for many years now, I'd like to think that I already have the skills necessary for this Makeable Challenge. So for this video, I thought I'd share some of my experience with you guys and provide you with my top five tips for improving your 3D design and 3D printing skills. One of the first things I wish I'd known when starting out was that there are various design software options out there, each with their own unique purposes. For example, I didn't really understand that for sculptural modeling, software like Maya or ZBrush was ideal, while mechanical models were best created in software like SolidWorks. I was lucky in the fact that the CAD program that I chose to learn initially worked with the types of projects I wanted to create, but if I was to go back in time, I'd certainly have taken the time to experiment with different 3D modeling styles to broaden my versatility as a designer. Fortunately for you guys, we now have Fusion 360, which enables you to seamlessly switch between different CAD environments, such as solid modeling, T-spline, surface modeling, CAM, and even rendering and animation. It allows you to explore different modeling approaches all within one program, and by having the knowledge of these different approaches, you'll become a much better rounded designer that can uh, visualize and implement solutions that you might not have even thought of before. For those of you using Tinkercad, you might not have all of the different CAD environments Fusion 360 offers, but what you do have is the option to experiment with interactive circuits and coding workspaces. So be sure to check those tools out. And when you've mastered Tinkercad, consider taking the leap into Fusion 360. The way I learned CAD was to set myself specific tasks, and when I got stuck, I'd head over to YouTube to find the answer. This is something I still do to this day, but I'd also recommend combining this type of on-the-go learning with a structured course that can give you a holistic and comprehensive um, understanding of the program that you're using. Because I didn't learn the fundamentals and best practices when I started, my workflow and the models were not really as efficient or well-optimized as they could be. I missed some super basic shortcuts and operations that would have sped up my modeling and learning exponentially if I'd been using them from the very beginning. <laughs> For example, I only recently discovered the click and drag object selection in Fusion 360 and I've been using this program for 10 years. So don't be like me, take the time to understand the basics and you will not regret it. Tip number three is design with the manufacturing process in mind. Although 3D printing gives you an enormous amount of design freedom, there are still constraints. So you need to implement techniques that can be used to ensure that you have successful prints. This will save you time, materials, and a whole load of stress. Some of these techniques include minimizing overhanging features, ensuring adequate wall thicknesses, and incorporating clearances with your connecting parts. Constraints might seem like a negative at first, but they create clear rules about what forms work and what forms don't, and this all helps to get you to your end goals quicker. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is isolating 3D printing. And what I mean by this is that they limit themselves to one technology and to one material. While our focus for the Make Oval Challenge is 3D printing, remember that it can be combined with other manufacturing processes and other materials. In fact, in industry, it's actually quite rare to see 3D printing used as a standalone process. For example, if you are creating a product, it might not make sense to 3D print a large basic shape when it could be laser cut in a fraction of the time or replaced with a simple piece of hardware. At the end of the day, 3D printing is a fantastic game-changing tool, but it's not the only tool in the toolbox. My final tip is to simply get stuck in and design as much as possible. Skill building is about creating a foundation. Don't worry about learning absolutely everything before you start. The key is to learn enough to begin experimenting with the programs and start creating with your printers. Making mistakes is part of the learning process, and that only happens if you take that first step and start making.